Coffee Break German, Lesson 2. Welcome to Coffee Break German. My name is Mark and I'm here with Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Mark. Wie geht's dir heute? Uh, mir geht's gut, danke. Wie geht's? Mir geht's auch gut, danke. Okay, there's already a word in there that I'm going to ask you about, but let's leave that for just now. This is the second lesson in our course, which will hopefully help you learn German with me, as I learn with Thomas, our teacher, our native speaker, who will be helping us throughout this course. I hope you enjoyed the first lesson and we have lots more phrases and words today for you to learn. At the end of the lesson, I'll give you all the details to help you get access to all the additional materials that accompany this course. You can find everything at coffeebreakgerman.com. But in the meantime, let's get on with today's lesson. Okay, Mark. Bist du fertig? Ja? Dann lass uns anfangen. Now, Thomas, there are already some words and phrases that I need explained to me. You know what I'm like. I like to know what every single word means. So you said, mir geht's auch gut, I think. Yeah, the auch means I'm fine as well. So auch means as well or also, presumably. Also as well, too. Okay, so mir geht's auch gut. Yeah. Cool. So let, let's practice that. Mir geht's auch gut. Mir geht's auch gut. Mir geht's auch gut. Okay, so we have auch on its own. Auch. 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 And that means also or as well or too. Okay. Mir geht's auch gut. I'm also feeling well. Mir geht's auch gut. Okay, and if I were also feeling bad, I could say, mir geht's auch schlecht. Sehr gut. Korrekt. Mir geht's auch schlecht. You mentioned the second word you wanted me to explain to you. Yes. When you say, bist du fertig? Uh, are you ready? And I said, yes. You, you followed it up with something. You said a phrase, I, I assume it means something like, let's go. Dann lass uns anfangen. Yes, it means let's get started. Okay, can you sit slowly, please? Lass uns anfangen. So let's split that up into separate words. Lass, lass uns, uns anfangen. Anfangen. Ja, sehr gut. Lass uns anfangen. Lass uns anfangen. Let's get started. Let's get started. So anfangen, does that mean... To start, to start, to begin. Okay, so lass uns, is that let us? Yes, literally, lass, it's let and uns, us. Lass uns anfangen. Lass uns anfangen. Okay, my challenge then for next time is, I'm going to say that when you ask me, bist du fertig? Okay, I'll need to remember that. Okay, Mark, we already heard a few words from the last lesson. Let's review a few others and see how much you remembered. Okay, so will we just go through a list of the words and phrases? No, I think it's the best if we have a proper German conversation and practice the few words we learned so far. Okay, uh, lass uns anfangen. Ja, guten Morgen, Mark. Guten Morgen, Thomas. Wie geht's? Sehr gut, danke. Wie geht es dir? Mir geht's schlecht. Das ist schade. I pretend I know what that means. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Okay, so you know what's coming, Thomas. There were two things in there I need some explanation with. First of all, the phrase that you said in response to me saying, mir geht's schlecht, which means I'm not very well, I'm, I'm feeling bad today. You said a, a phrase, what was the phrase you said? Das ist schade. Das ist schade. Yeah, schade means like, that's a shame. Okay, das ist schade. Das ist schade. Okay, so that's a shame. And you also said another word when you were asking me, how are you? You said, wie geht's dir? Okay, and what does that mean? It means, last last lesson we learned, wie geht's? 
you can also say, wie geht's dir? That just means, how is it going to you? Ah, of course, because when I say, mir geht's gut, it literally means, to me, it goes well, or it goes good. So, wie geht's dir? How is it going to you? Yes, it just adds the you to the sentence. Instead of, how are you? Wie geht's dir? Okay, so I can say, wie geht's, or wie geht's dir? Yes, it means the same. Now, in French, you have the tu and vous form. So the tu form being the informal you and the vous being the formal you. And in Spanish, you've got tu and usted and in Italian, it's, it's similar. Are there two forms of you in German? Yes, it's the same in German. We also have two forms, an informal one and an informal one. So which one is wie geht's dir? So far, we learned the informal one. That's informal. So this is the way you and I speak together because we know each other. So, wie geht's dir? Yes, that's the informal way. If you want to address somebody formal, you would say, wie geht's Ihnen? Wie geht's Ihnen? Wie geht's Ihnen? Okay, I think we'll leave that just now. We can learn a little more about the informal and formal forms in future lessons. I think what I'd like to do now is learn a few more greetings for different times of the day. We've already learned Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Which, of course, means good morning. What about good afternoon? Yeah, in Germany, you would say good day for most of the time of the day. There's not really a good afternoon. We just say guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Okay, so guten Tag can mean good day. When would you start using guten Tag? You'll probably start at about 12 o'clock before you say guten Morgen, what we already learned. And then in the evening, you would say guten Abend. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. So we've got guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. And guten Abend. Guten Abend. Or good morning, good day, and good evening. And how would you say good night? Gute Nacht. It's the last one. So we've got gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. Now, you know what's coming here. There are three different versions which use guten, guten morgen, guten tag, guten abend. But now when it comes to night, you don't say guten, you say gute. Yeah. Gute. So gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. And I'm sure there's a reason for that. Yes, there is the word gut, good is an adjective and adjectives can change depending what they describe. Okay, so in that sense, it's just like French and Spanish, where the adjective changes its form when it's describing, for example, in Spanish, a masculine word or a feminine word. I take it's the same in German. Yes, it's the same. But for that question and all the other tricky grammar questions, we're going to introduce a new member of our Coffee Break German team. We are indeed. Now, Coffee Break German, like our other Coffee Break courses, is not just about learning a series of phrases and being able to use these phrases when you need to. It's about understanding how the language works so that you can create the language that you want when you need to. In order to do that, we need to learn a little bit about the patterns of the language, the grammar that holds everything together. And we've brought along our grammar guru to help you understand how German works. Over to you. Hello everyone, it's Kirsten here again and it's my job to help you make a little bit more sense of the German language. Now, as Mark said, grammar is what holds the words and phrases of a language together. It's a bit like glue, I suppose. So while Thomas teaches you and Mark how to say things in German, I'll be here to explain why all those words and phrases have been put together that way, breaking it down giving you little hints and tips along the way so that you can start making your own sentences in German. So, today Thomas has been teaching you some greetings and he's given you four greetings, one for each time of day. We've had Guten Morgen, 
Good morning, guten Tag, good afternoon, guten Abend, good evening, and gute Nacht was good night. Now, Mark, you've already noticed that gute Nacht is the odd one out here because it's the only one where we say gute and not guten. As Thomas has already said, gut is an adjective, and adjectives in German, just like in French and Spanish and many other languages, change their endings depending on the word that they are describing. So you're probably thinking that the word Nacht is somehow different from Morgen, Tag and Abend. And you'd be right. These four words are nouns. And nouns in German, again, just like in French or Spanish, have grammatical gender. The difference between them then is that Nacht has a different gender from the other three. And that is why we have Guten Morgen, Guten Tag and Guten Abend, but Gute Nacht. We will explain this in more detail in another lesson, but you may be interested to know that Morgen, Tag and Abend are all masculine nouns, while Nacht is feminine. Now, this probably leaves you with lots of questions, and that's a good thing. By asking questions when you're learning a language, you get to understand the language in more depth. However, we're going to be coming back to the topic of grammatical gender, and indeed adjectives, later in the series, so we'll leave things there for just now. Lots of little steps will eventually take you far. I hope at least that have helped to solve one little mystery about Guten Morgen, Guten Tag, Guten Abend and Gute Nacht. For now though, it's back to Mark and Thomas in the studio. So hopefully that makes a lot more sense now. We've got Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. And Gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. Okay. I think another important element that we should really cover in this second lesson of Coffee Break German is how to introduce yourself and how to ask someone what is your name. We're going to stick again here to the formal version because the chances are the first person that you meet would be someone that you don't necessarily know. And if you're asking their name, then the chances are you'll be using the formal version. So, Thomas, can you tell me how you would say what is your name in a formal way? Wie heißen Sie? Okay, let's split that up again. Wie heißen C. Okay, I'll repeat that. V. V. Heißen. Heißen. C. Z. V. Heißen Z. V. Heißen Z. Now, is that V the same V as in V. Gates? Yes, it means how. So, V. Heißen Z. What does that literally mean? It means how are you called? So the how is V, heißen is the part to be called, and Z means you, but in the formal way. Okay, so you, Z, heißen is to be called, and V, how. So how are you called? What are you called? What is your name? V, heißen Z. V, heißen Z. How would I answer that question? How would I say my name is or I am called? You would say, ich heiße Thomas. Let's hear that again. Ich heiße Thomas. So I'm recognizing the heiße in there. That's very like heißen. So the first word was? Ich. Ich, meaning I. I. Okay. So ich heiße, and then your name. Yes. It's I am called Thomas. Ich heiße Mark. Ja, sehr gut. So, ask me the question again. Wie heißen Sie? Ich heiße Mark. Richtig. Uh, so, if I ask you, I can say, wie heißen Sie? Ich heiße Thomas. Okay, now let's ask our listeners. Wie heißen Sie? 
And hopefully you answered. Ich heiße, and then your name. Excellent. Now, that's I am called. Is there another way of saying my name is? I'm, I'm thinking in French you could say my name is literally and same in Spanish. So can you say my name is in okay. German? Now that possibility also exists in German. You can say mein Name ist. Mein Name ist. That means literally my name is. So mein Name ist Mark. Ja. Und wie heißen Sie? Mein Name ist Thomas. Okay, so we've got two possibilities to answer that one question. The question, wie heißen Sie? And two possible answers. Ich heiße Thomas or mein Name ist Thomas. Excellent. Now, learning a language is not just about the language itself. It also involves learning about all the cultures associated with that language. And as you know, we have our cultural correspondent, Julia, who's going to be bringing us some tips each week about the cultural side of things. Today, Julia is going to be telling us a little bit about where German is spoken. Over to you, Julia. Hi, Mark. Hi, Thomas. And hi to all our Coffee Break German listeners. As I explained to you last week, I'm here to talk about the cultural side of the German-speaking area. And in today's report, I'm going to be looking at where German is actually spoken. As I'm sure you know, German is the official language of Germany, well, obviously, um, Switzerland and Austria. But it's also an official language in Belgium, along with French and Flemish, in Luxembourg, where it shares its official status with French and Luxembourgish, and in the tiny principality of Liechtenstein on the border between Austria and Switzerland. So you'll be glad to know that the language you're learning is spoken in many parts of Europe, but that's not all. Did you know that there are over 5 million speakers of German living in the US? And there are huge communities of German speakers in Brazil and Argentina. It's the third most taught language in the English-speaking world after French and Spanish. And as a native English speaker, you're going to find that it's really quite easy to learn German. Because historically, English and German belong to the same language family. In fact, hundreds of years ago, people speaking older forms of German and English could probably understand each other. And many words between the two languages are similar. I know you've already heard examples of this from Thomas. Anyway, that's enough from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this little contribution from me, your cultural correspondent. I'll be back again next time with more tips for you. But for now, it's back to Thomas and Mark in the studio. Tschüss! Thank you to Julia for her cultural correspondent segment. Okay, it's time now to review the language that we've learned in this episode. We've done some greetings for different times of the day, and they were good morning. Guten Morgen. And then good afternoon, or more literally, good day. Guten Tag. Good evening. Guten Abend. And good night. Gute Nacht. We learned how to ask, what is your name? Wie heißen Sie? And two ways to answer that question. First of all, my name is. Mein Name ist. And secondly, I am called. Ich heiße. Okay, it's time now to say until the next time. Or in German, how would we say that? Bis zum nächsten Mal. Okay, can you slow that down a little for us? Bis. Bis. Zum. Zum. Nächsten. Nächsten. Mal. Mal. So the whole thing together. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Now, as we are learning these words and phrases, you are hearing how they sound to find out how they're written down and to get lots more information about the German that you're learning, you can use the premium version of this course. Find out more at coffeebreakgerman.com. We would also really like to know what you think of this course so far. So you can either leave a review on iTunes or write a comment on our website. 
or indeed both, if you really want to let us know what you think. Thank you very much for listening. Danke. And uh, let's see if I remember. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. You've been listening to an audio podcast from Season 1 of Coffee Break German. To get access to the bonus materials for this lesson, which include lesson notes, bonus audio materials, and video versions of the lesson where the words and phrases appear on the screen of your device, then you can take our full online course on the Coffee Break Academy. Head over to coffeebreakacademy.com. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be kept up to date as to when we're publishing new episodes of Coffee Break German, then make sure you hit the little bell icon which appears. And also, leave a comment, try out your German, and let us know what you think of this episode. Also, vielen Dank, thank you for watching, und bis zum nächsten Mal. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2019, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2019, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved.